Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm a big uh, fan of World War II movies and books and stuff. Mm. So I've been, I've been interested to notice the parallels that led up to World War II, which is something that you cover in your book. Very interesting stuff. So tell us about the parallels that you see. So the thing that I found that I decided to write this book about is that in the lead up to World War II, like Germany's going to Hitler, Italy's going to Mussolini, Spain's going to Franco, like it's happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we had a rising fascist movement here, here too. And it wasn't just crazy fringe characters, it was connected to the most powerful people in the country. Right. And a whole bunch of fascists got put on trial for seditious conspiracy, for trying to overthrow the government by force. There were two dozen members of Congress and the Senate who are working with a Nazi agent. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, I Bunch mean, meetings up here in, York, in Yorkville. Sure, there were street, street violence against Jewish businesses yeah. and Jewish pastors by in New York City. There was a 20,000 plus person rally with swastika nice. And everything Square Garden. Square Garden. Square Garden. Yeah. you mentioned before. Oh, we were talking about there's a one of the bad guys in the book is a senator from North Carolina, a Dixiecrat senator named Robert Rice Reynolds. Oh. And when it came time to consider whether or not Jewish refugees from Nazi terror would be allowed into this you know, into the United States, mm -hmm. he said, I will build a wall. We will build a wall around the United States to keep those people out. And, and the Jews were not allowed in any of the countries. That's why they, they, they had the Holocaust. They were stuck where they were. No one would let them in, Including just us. like the Palestinians yeah. are stuck now. Yeah. It's an interesting parallel to see that sort of suffering that's going on. The fear of refugees, the fear of innocent people who are being persecuted, that if you bring them here, they'll somehow bring their problems here or bring the trouble with them is something that I feel like we need to dig deep in terms of our faith yes, and our humanity we do. and get over. Yeah, because it's been with us we a didn't long time, time though. That, that feeling has been with us a long time. We, we have, we, we go through this, I, you know. Rage and fear. It's all of this cyclical. If you go to the peril of the Good Samaritan in the Bible, even if you are not a Bible-believing yeah, person, yeah. there's a reason that we have been trying to teach each other this form of kindness for yeah. thousands of years. Yeah. And it has become, it's a core of who we are as people. Yeah. Yeah. But religion doesn't seem to help. The wars are always about religion. Well, the wars are always about a lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> land. And we land. use religion as a way to scapegoat other people yeah. and to try yeah. to see them as oh, not human. Right. Yeah. And once you see people as not fully human, then you don't want to participate in a that's democracy right. with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that you, scapegoating and you can also is very kill dangerous. Them. Very dangerous. Yes. You can also kill them if you don't see exactly. them as human. <laughs> and Rachel, I do want to ask you, and this book's phenomenal, I'm only halfway through it, but um, I've tried to be consistent in calling out right wing moves toward fascism and extremism. I want to know, do you think that Democrats, the current party, bears any responsibility in moves? One thing that comes to mind for me that I see as anti-democratic is court packing, um, which some have called for. Do you think so, or do you think this falls more the Supreme Court? Uniquely, uniquely on the right? Well, I th it's, in it's, a, it's a good question, and I think it's totally worth asking. I think that those calls on the left, the frustration over how the Republican Party handled Supreme Court nominations, led to this idea that we ought to reform the court, change the court, um, in much the same way, like F the, the term court packing comes from when FDR proposed yep. the same thing, yep. and it was shot down when he wanted to do it um, 80 years ago. But how did, how did the government proceed with that? President Biden was like, you know what? I hear these calls for this from my party. Let's have a blue ribbon commission to look into it. And they had a blue ribbon commission to look into it and make recommendations. And he said, thank you very much. And he put it in the drawer. Like, that's not the move of a strong man, you know, a strong man authoritarian and the leader. Institutionalist Joe Biden, He's yes. an institutionalist. Yeah. And the Democratic Party is like, I mean, while the Republican Party is firing their own speaker and shutting down Congress, Joe Biden is like lowering prescription drug prices. I mean, the 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 two parties have two very different projects right now. And I want Republicans to want politics. Yeah. They don't seem to be pursuing politics right now. They are pursuing yeah. a different form of government for this country. Yeah. And, and that is a big deal. And they're not all the same either. Right. They are not all Republicans are the same. Yeah. Well, I'm just reminding everybody. <laughs> you know, Rachel, come to the table anytime, well, anytime you, you want to.